When it comes to energy, the issue of nuclear power in Australia has long been an issue of contention. Also, we were told that earlier this week, research from the Minerals Council of Australia was released showing a change in public sentiment may well be on the way. Polling conducted by the respected business pollster JWS Research found that 40% of people in Australia support lifting the ban on nuclear power, with only 33% arguing that the ban should be retained. Currently, a parliamentary inquiry into nuclear energy is underway, with the possibility that the committee could report before the end of the year. Joining me now is the chair of the Standing Committee on the Environment and Energy that's conducting this inquiry. Its chair is the member for Queensland's federal seat of Fairfax, Mr Ted O'Brien. He joins me now live from Canberra. I want to just start with this whole issue of the remit. Why you went down the path of a nuclear energy review in the first place, Ted, and uh, give me a sense of how that review has been conducted. Where have you gone? How many submissions have you got? What's been the response of ordinary Australians and industry? Good evening, Peter. So this came about because there's been two really big changes that has impacted the debate on nuclear energy. Um, number one, the debate around climate change. And as we know, as an emissions-free baseload technology, um, nuclear is used right across the world. Um, about 30 countries, um, over 450 reactors are used. The second big change has been technology. Some people, when they hear about nuclear, um, they assume you're talking about that old, large smokestack technology, you know, uh, Chernobyl, old Soviet era stuff. Um, now we're actually looking at the advance of small modular technology, um, which is really going to be the, the major game changer. So technology change and climate change are the two things that have really brought this debate forward again. And so the Parliamentary Committee has been looking at this. This is a um, cross-parliament committee. So obviously I'm, I'm a Liberal. We have coalition members, Labor members, the crossbench. We've travelled the country. We've received well over 300 submissions. And as we know, nuclear is a hot topic when it's raised. And look, energy debate, as you know, Peter, is one contested area in Australia. <laughs> you throw nuclear into the mix. Um, there's always the risk that it gets uh, hyperventilated everywhere and it gets overly emotional. Thankfully, we've been able to run this um, issue with a high degree of fact-based evidence. So we've tried to keep the emotion out of it, try to keep the ideology out of it and just try to get to the facts. Now, um, there's been three things we've looked at. Number one, the question is, is nuclear energy feasible? for Australia. So does it stack up on economic grounds, uh, technological grounds and on capability grounds? Secondly, is nuclear energy suitable for Australia? Environmental safety and security considerations. And then is it palatable? And uh, you mentioned in your introduction some of the um, polling that came out earlier this week. Now, obviously, parliamentary committees don't look at polling um, in terms of formal submissions. but. The interesting insight from that polling is the fact that the needle does move depending on how people think about the issue of nuclear technology. And there's no doubt that in the event of Australia wanting to progress the nuclear energy debate, a social licence is critical. If you look at other countries, how they manage um, their existing nuclear energy fleet, social trust is what it's all about. Yeah, let me, just, um, jump you in, let me just jump in there. Yeah, though. sure. I, I think one of the interesting things about the debate on nuclear is the level of ignorance in the community. Now, I'm not having a go at people who are ignorant of particularly new nuclear energy technology because we just stifle the debate in this country. Uh, Tanya Constable, she's the head of the Minerals Council, that was the body that had uh, commissioned this research. And she makes the point that the more people learn about it, the greater support there is for nuclear energy. This sends a clear message to politicians. Many Australians want nuclear energy to be considered as part of our future mix. Now, I would say the left or those who don't want nuclear energy in Australia are invested in denying Australians to even have the conversation about nuclear power. Now, I'm not saying we do it or we don't. You know, it's got to stack up. There's a whole lot of safety measures and economic measures. Yes, I get all of that. But, but we've got to at least have the debate. And I think some would rather us didn't have the debate 
because when people don't know much, they think it's scary. When they know more, they better understand the safeguards and the opportunity of nuclear power. Peter, dead right. And you can't on one hand say that we want to be technology neutral and on the same hand say that we need to lower emissions. But then on the other, um, say we cannot even consider um, emissions-free baseload technology. Um, and that is why we're having this parliamentary inquiry in the first place. Um, you know, with, with the amount of wind and solar coming into the, uh, to the grid, they need to be um, firmed up. Um, and one of the big problems I've seen in just the energy debate is almost this binary choice that you're either pro-renewables or you're pro-fossil fuels, which is absolute garbage. Mm -hmm. Reality is renewables are coming in, but it's, uh, it's up to God as to whether the wind blows and the sun shines. Um, but, and when it doesn't, um, in order for there to be reliability, um, you need to have them firmed up. You need that base load. You need that flexibility. And that's what, um, what nuclear offers overseas. You've got the likes of, um, of France that has about 75% reliance on nuclear technology All right, um, well, yeah, across yeah. Europe. When do, we, when do we expect to see this report? And uh, can I jump in early and say that when it lands, I'd love to have you back on the show and go through some of it in detail. When do you expect to table the report or at least provide it to the Parliament? We're, we're, we're hoping that it'll be by the end of this year. That's been the remit that we've been given. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're butting up against Christmas, so there's a little bit of juggling to be done. But All if right. it's not by the end of this year, it'll be early next year. I'd love to come back and have a chat. Terrific. Thank you very much, Ted O'Brien. It sounds like it's a sober assessment of a very important subject. I look forward to reading it, and uh, I look forward to having you back on the show. Thanks very much.